Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I don't know if you've ever stopped to think about it, but of all the creatures in the animal kingdom, only man, and man alone, will murder his mate simply because she no longer pleases him. True, certain of our friends in fur, fin, or feather will indulge in desertion or even divorce, but murder... For that, you must have the highest degree of culture and civilization. For that, you have to be human. I... I must know what I can do, Doctor, to... to keep myself from killing my wife. Why do you want to kill her? I don't want to kill her. Well, then, what makes you think you're going to? I... I've been told I'm going to do it. By whom? I've been told unmistakably, and in no uncertain terms... And that's what scares me. But who told you? Pluto. Who's Pluto? A cat. A cat told you? Yes. My wife's cat. Our mystery drama, The Black Cat, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars... Norman Rose. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Consider the act of murder. Popular opinion has it the majority of killers are ruthless, cold-blooded, devoid of pity. But the facts tell a different tale. Statistics reveal most murderers are neither brutal nor savage. The record shows you don't have to be a devil or a demon or even a criminal. Experience teaches a killer could be any one of us. Given the time, the place, the provocation, it could be you. It could be I. And it could even be Philip Sterling. Uh, Sylvia says you want to see me, Mr. Fenris. Mm, that's right, Phil. Well? I have a simple statement to make. A brief 13-word announcement. I had no idea you measured out your words. Ah, oh, they should add up to 13. It happens to be an unlucky statement as far as you're concerned. Uh, suppose you end the suspense, Mr. Fenris. What is this historic pronouncement, hmm? If you marry my daughter... I will cut her off without a cent. Uh, yes, it uh, it does add up to 13 words. And you'd better believe them. Well, then I have no choice. I'll break the engagement. I certainly can't marry Sylvia if she has no money. Why, you unprincipled scoundrel. Oh, Mr. You... Fenris, while I may be a scoundrel, I do have principles. You admit you want to marry Sylvia for her money? What other reason could I possibly have? Well, of all the un... Uh, don't sputter at me, <sighs> Mr. Fenris. After all, it's your fault. What, my fault? Without question. Had you been a better father, more loving, more attentive, you would have raised a more attractive daughter. Well, I'll have you thrown out of here. Consider Sylvia calmly, objectively. She's immature. She's naive. She's hopelessly romantic. She's careless. Uh, that's my word. Others would say sloppy about her weight, about her appearance. It's your fault. Your fault. All of it. How have you know I gave my daughter everything? You gave her only what money could buy. And in addition to everything else, she has that, that damn black cat, that Pluto. And she pretends she can talk with it. But, uh, but she's, she's kind. She's gentle. Of course. Otherwise, she'd be unbearable. Why am I even discussing this? Get out of here. Face the facts. You're 75 years old. 70. How much longer can you live? 10, 15 years? With Sylvia, she'll still be under 40. And the money, all of it hers to squander as she sees fit. And you know she'll be the natural target of every sharpshooting fortune hunter. I told you to get out. You say that one more time and I will. Oh, be practical, Mr. Fenris. I'm the best hope you've got. Because all I want to do with her money... Uh, your money, is enjoy it. I'm not burning to build empires. I only want to live comfortably. And on your money, I can. And, uh, well, I even happen to like Sylvia. Just enough to put up with her. I... I think you must be the devil himself. <laughs> well, better the devil you know than the devil you might get. Oh, it's ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Two minutes ago, you were scared stiff I'd marry Sylvia. Now you're absolutely petrified I won't. 
Daddy. Oh, please, Pluto and I simply couldn't wait any longer. Daddy, you do approve of Phil. You do, don't you? Uh, Sylvia, I have a four-word statement to make. Bless you, my children. Good morning, Phil, darling. I did. You did? What for? We have to be up and about. Uh, at a quarter to six in the morning? Oh, I intend to make your breakfast. I never eat breakfast. Oh, well, you should. You should. Gets the day off to a glorious start. Well, it's not as if I'll be swinging a pick and shovel. Well, maybe you should. Oh, Pluto's up. Would you get out of bed, Phil, darling, and let him in? Yes, dear. Isn't he just the sweetest thing in the world? Yes, he sure is. Now, what were we talking about? Uh, picks and shovels and hearty breakfasts. A combination guaranteed to make me ill. Phil, you don't know a thing about the construction business. I never claimed I did. I was honest with your father. But then why did you accept a job with a plush office and a secretary? Because I honestly intend to learn the business. Then that's why you should walk into Daddy's office and say, Sir... The only way to learn this business is from the ground up. Well, uh, I... Well, you know I'm right. And besides, Pluto thinks it's a splendid idea. Pluto thinks... Oh, of course he does, don't you, Pluto? <coughs> Matter of fact, Pluto and I discussed it last night. Uh, Sylvia... Why can't you believe Pluto and I talk together? Because to talk means to exchange words and Pluto cannot... Oh, no, no, dear. To talk together means to exchange thoughts. And that's what we do, Pluto and I. How? Well, you look Pluto in the eye. And then you beam your thoughts at him. And he just beams his thoughts back at you. That's talking. That's communicating, isn't it? Um, well... Uh... I looked into Pluto's eyes. And he looked into mine. And he just beamed that idea about the way you could learn Dad's business right into my head. So, don't you see? You have Pluto to thank for it. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Pluto. All my life, I hated work. Put in an August day on a road-building crew under a relentless sun that beats down. The heat shimmers off that concrete at about 115 degrees. And you will know what punishment is. Oh, oh Phil, darling, oh. where does it hurt? Everywhere. Well, a little gentle massage will ease those aches. No, no, nothing. Nothing will ever relieve these pains. Pluto says you'll get used to it. Now, you just tell Pluto for me that I will never get used to but it. But you will. Let Pluto tell you himself. Will you tell him, Pluto, dear? Oh, come on, Sylvia. You say that you won't get used to that kind of work. You just beam that thought into Pluto's eyes. Sylvia, my, my back hurts. I'm in no Pluto mood for... Pluto will give you inspiration and courage. You just look into Pluto's eyes. Come on, Pluto. Yep. Up on the bed, Jim. That's it. Now, look into Phil's eyes. Don't you feel Pluto's thoughts coming into your mind? I don't know what color a cat's eye is supposed to be. But suddenly, I was staring into a kaleidoscope of brilliant hues, flaming reds. Freezing greens, burning yellows, icy blues, all of them shifting, twisting, trying to form into shapes. And there was this terribly taut feeling of tension, as if the entire kaleidoscope were trying to, to dissolve into a scene. And finally, the way a bubble bursts, all the colors blended into that, that one icy blue. That icy blue became two of the coldest frostiest eyes I'd ever seen in my life. The eyes of a sharp-faced man 
in a black robe, and he was talking to me. Philip Frederick Sterling, have you anything to say before the sentence of this court is passed upon you? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. I couldn't kill anyone. I'm not made that way. You must believe me. I'm not a killer. You shall be in prison at the state penitentiary. No, until... you can't do it. I'm innocent. Until the third day of April. No, no, I no. Be... What did you do? What did you do to Pluto? Huh? Uh, I didn't do anything to Pluto. He... He saw something in your eyes. Oh, what could he have seen? The future. The future? Yes. He saw the future and it frightened him. Meow. Oh, he is terrified. Meow. And so are you. Me? What, what are you talking about? I, I'm not... Why are you shaking all over? Who's... You are. Phil. What did you see in Pluto's eyes? Nothing. But Phil... I said I saw nothing. I could say that to her, Doctor. But not to myself. Because I... Well, I had seen something. A courtroom. A judge. A jury. A defendant. And, of course, that defendant was me. Go on, Miss Sterling. I wasn't imagining this, Doctor. I looked into the eyes of that cat, and and I saw... Uh, yes, you saw that you were being convicted of murder and sentenced by a judge. Uh, you don't think I'm crazy? Oh, crazy has many connotations. Whether or not you're crazy, as you put it, is irrelevant here. Uh, but why should I see such a scene? I think you know why. Oh, I don't. I say you do. Uh, please, Doctor, tell me why. It's... It's because you want to kill your wife. <laughs> That's ridiculous. No, it's true. Well, why would I want to kill my wife? Why did you marry her? For her money. So far, you haven't been able to spend one cent of her money. Well, I'm willing to wait. And work on a road gang? What do you suggest? If I were you... I would leave her. Why? You made a bad bargain. You thought you'd fall in soft. It isn't happening. You're beginning to resent her. Already the thought of murder is rattling around in your subconscious. Now look, the old man is worth millions. She gets all of it. Oh no, I, I can't walk out on that. Well, then reconcile yourself to the road gang. I have to, I will. Darling, reach down and pat Pluto's head. Huh? He's forgiven you. For what? For scaring him the other day. Oh, <laughs> poor Pluto. Come here, boy. Now you see how he likes you? Well, I like him, too. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're pals, aren't we, Pluto? Well, oh, do you think you could talk to each other again? Well, sure. <laughs> How are things, Pluto, baby? No, no, I mean really talk. Look into his eyes. Oh, that. Look into them, Phil. Maybe Pluto has something to tell you. Well, okay. Talk to Phil, Pluto. Talk to him. Once again, I looked into Pluto's eyes deep into his eyes. Once again, the colors surged and swirled. Reds, greens, blues, yellows. Boiling, burning. And suddenly... Suddenly, all the roiling motion stopped. As if it were frozen. And the icy blue predominated. And once again, I was staring into those two icy blue eyes... The eyes that belonged to the sharp-faced man in the jet-black robe. In all my years on the bench, I have never encountered murder so foul. I didn't do it. I must warn the prisoner. If he insists on interrupting... But, but I didn't do it. The fiendishness of this act... I couldn't do it. Only a month... No! Oh, no! As 
as the poet said, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. He might have added, I am the ruler of my mind. It's an interesting project Phil Sterling has set up for himself. Talk out the bad, talk in the good. Drive murder out of his brain and coax love into his heart. If such a thing can be done, it will happen when I return shortly with Act Two. If, as they say, you can see the entire universe in a single drop of water, why is it unreasonable to suppose that Philip Sterling can see the future in the eyes of a cat? Phil is not only convinced he can see his future, he is also certain he can change it. For the better, naturally. Sylvia, call Pluto in here. Oh, darling, he's very frightened. I'll call him in. Hmm? Well, I'm not sure that I should. He... I need him. You what? Sylvia, you're the one who insisted on having the word obey in the marriage ceremony. Call Pluto in here. Pluto... Pluto, it's all right, baby. Yes. Here, Pluto. Oh, up on Phil's lap. Oh. Yeah. Up, up. That's it. Yes. I, uh, I want to look into his eyes. Oh, I don't think it's wise. Well, I, I have my reasons. All right. Pluto, Phil wants to talk to you. Yeah. Pluto. Talk to Phil. Once again, I looked into Pluto's eyes and I saw nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. What do you say to that, Dr. Myers? Murder? If it was ever in there, I, I drove it out of my mind. I drove all thoughts of murder out of my mind. I'm smiling because I love you. Oh, Phil. What's got into you lately? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Keep to your left. Keep to your left. Keep to your left. Come on. Come on. There's plenty of room. Come on. Keep moving. Oh, my God. It can't be, but it is. Wait, look. It's Phil. Phil, baby. Is this for real? Phil, darling. Oh, wait till the gang hears about this. Oh, hi, Gwenny. Bruce. Oh, Phil, Phil. Phil, darling, I never knew you had such muscles. What happened, Phil? Does your father in all lose all his money? Uh, look, you're holding up traffic. Is this what Mary does uh, to a man? I'll explain it some other time. Get moving. Get moving, or I'll catch it for my foreman. Everything go all right today? Hmm? Oh, uh, Sure. You haven't said a word all during dinner. Well, I'm... I'm just tired. Well, I know you're not used to hard work, but... But you'll see. You'll find it so rewarding. Oh, sure. I... I have a surprise for you. Won't you ask me what it is? Okay. It's Dad's wedding gift. You know what he wants to give us? A house. A house? A house of our very own. He wants to give us... The house on Rogers Cove. Uh, the big one? Yeah, the big one with the boat landing, the tennis court. Ah, well, that is a gift. Uh, <laughs> I turned it down. You what? I turned it down. Uh, but, but, Sylvia, why? Because we can't afford it. We can't afford it? Not on your salary. You don't know how hard I had to work to restrain my father. Uh, from, from doing what? Well, he wants to give us everything right away. Now, Think of that, what it would do to you. It would absolutely rob you of your initiative. Uh, Sylvia, Sylvia, we shouldn't insult your father by, uh... All in good time, darling. Our first home should be a, a modest ranch house, or, or would you prefer a split level? I, uh... uh... In a development with other young couples like ourselves. Uh, but, darling... Oh, Phil, I had a long talk about it with Pluto. With Pluto? He'll show you the wisdom of it. Pluto, go to Phil. Uh, no, wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Sylvia. 
Sylvia, I, I, I must tell you, I love you. Well, of course you do. I love you. My only desire is to, to protect you, to, to keep you from harm. No, 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 Pluto. Phil wants to talk with you. Once again, I looked into those eyes. Once again, the whirl of almost blinding colors. But this time, this time, something was different. In the struggle among the blues, the yellows, the greens, and the reds. The bright, crimson reds. They were winning out. Everything was red. Flowing red. Blood red. Red blood on a pale white face. Blood on... on Sylvia's face. Phil! Phil, please! Don't hit me! Oh, Phil, please! I told you. I warned you. Everything's all right. Phil, what were you and Pluto talking about? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Where are you going? Out. Oh, I'll come with you. No. Oh. Uh, Sylvia, can't you understand? Sometimes a man just wants to be by himself, oh, that's all. of course, darling, I understand. We understand, don't we, Pluto? Go back to the party? Mm-hmm. Maybe later. It's much cozier here. Mm -hmm. I must say, absence does make the heart grow fonder. Oh, I missed you, Gwenny. Oh. Phil, how do you stand it? Oh, I have fantastic powers of endurance. <laughs> that is, I hope I do. You know, what with her talking to that cat and everything else, you could get her committed to, you You know, an asylum. After all, she is crazy. No, oh, no, no, no. Only poor people are crazy. Rich people are eccentric. Phil, I'm worried about you. Oh, don't be. I will be fabulously wealthy one day. Is that all there is to it? That's all there ever was for me. I don't like what it's doing to you. Oh, come on, Gwen. What's it doing to me? Well, you're not the same... You were always so happy-go-lucky. Well, that might have been just a pose. No, there's something new inside of you. Really? What? A kind of violence. Violence? I'm allergic to violence. You think so? You know what I always say. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Violence? Why, I can't even... Don't protest so much, Phil. It shows. How? When we ran into you on the road, Bruce and I, we started to kid you. You turned livid. Hmm. I don't remember. You were trembling with rage. That's your imagination. You tried to hide it. Well, maybe you're right. There are times when I could just... When you could just what? Kill her. You know, it, it, uh, it scares me. I never felt that way before about anybody. If I stay with her, I... I know that I'll kill her. And then... <laughs> Then, what good is the money? Aha! Uh -huh. oh, that's delicious. Have another helping, Dad. <laughs> you know, Phil, she used to break the heart of every chef I'd hire. <laughs> These fellas all had international reputations, but she'd just walk into the kitchen and... Whip up a little dish and put them all to shame. Daddy, <laughs> the preparation of food is a personal, intimate thing. Oh, we shouldn't hire strangers to do it. Don't you agree, Phil? 
I've never seen Phil so quiet. That's right. Darling, both you and Pluto haven't said a word all evening. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, um, I don't know about Pluto, but I, um, I am preparing a statement. Oh, <laughs> that sounds serious. It's a very important statement. Now, that's a coincidence. I, too, have a statement. May I? Of course. Phil, you've absolutely exceeded all my expectations. You've been an excellent husband to Sylvia... You've been conscientious on the job. And so, therefore, I have a seven-word statement. Hmm. Odd that it should add up to seven, because it's a lucky statement, and... Well, here it is. I have included you in my will. Oh, Daddy, Daddy. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't it wonderful, Pluto? Mm, I know now, Phil, that you'll succeed in the business. One day, they'll all be yours. Oh, Phil, did you hear that? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I heard it. Well, now that Daddy has made his statement, what was yours? What was mine? I was ready to say four simple words. I want a divorce. However, at that moment, it seemed like a stupid thing to do. I happened to glance at Pluto... He was looking up at me. His eyes were wide, and I could see the colors swirling again. But this time, the yellows, the bright flaming yellows, overwhelmed the others. And then, the yellow turned softer. It began to gleam like gold. Solid gold. Oh, what a fool I would be to throw away a chance to own one of the largest construction companies in America. I looked at Sylvia. I would simply have to love her. That's all. Love her so earnestly, so devotedly that I wouldn't have the inclination to kill her. Huh. The problem was solved. Aren't you going to make your statement, Phil? Uh, oh, uh, well... Uh, as it turns out, I... I really don't have one. You're playing a dangerous game. All your instincts tell you to get out. But suddenly, the stakes are raised to dizzying heights. What do you do? Phil Sterling has decided to stand pat. But how strong is his hand? Losers and winners in this game of life and death will be determined when I return shortly with Act Three. Why should love be a random, subjective thing, completely beyond our conscious control? Why can't we say, she is the logical person for me to love. Phil Sterling is determined to love his wife. Because if he can't, he knows he will have to kill her. Oh, darling, let's quit for the night. Oh, I can mix a batch of cement and start on the wall if you want me to. You work hard all day. Then you come home at night and I make you work in the basement. <laughs> oh, well, I don't mind. Come on upstairs, wash up. No, I'd just as soon keep working and finish this. Oh, but not tonight, Phil. I asked the Conways over for coffee. The Conways? Well, they really are such lovely people. Well, he's and... a bore. Phil? And she's such an idiot. Phil, we... You have to be friendly with your neighbors. Why? Well, darling, don't lose touch with ordinary people. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, that's what friends are for. I, I just have nobody else to talk to. On the job, at home, the neighbors. I think I'm about ready to flip. Well, Phil, you could always leave. I can't. <laughs> you know, you hear people say, I wouldn't do this or that for a million dollars. But it's academic. <laughs> nobody ever offered them the million. With me. Gwen, with me, the money is there. It's, um... It's not quite 
there. It's mine. I just have to wait it out. I am in the will. I am in it for 50%. Gren, you know how much that is? Mm-hmm. Besides, he's very old. How much longer can he live? Oh, Phil, you always were a genius when it came to figuring things. I wish I knew how to figure this. Well, you know you can't stay. And you don't have the nerve to leave. That isn't true. Been getting any readings from Pluto lately? Cut it out, Gwen. I bet you're afraid to look. Phil, you haven't eaten a thing. I'm, uh, I'm not hungry. Oh, darling, something's troubling you. Talk to Pluto. You'll feel better. I don't want to talk to Pluto. Oh, he's such a comfort. Talk to Phil, Pluto. Yeah. Sylvia. Sylvia. I love you. Well, I love you, and Pluto loves you, too. Tell him you love him, Pluto. Yeah. Well, I know something will cheer you up. Daddy's got results from his physical today, and he's in the best shape of his life. He is? And you deserve all the credit. <laughs> Because he doesn't have to worry about me anymore. <laughs> the doctor said Daddy will probably live forever. <laughs> oh, that's great. Phil, I can tell you, you're not feeling... I'm fine. You're out of sorts. Come on, let Pluto comfort you. Keep that cat away from me. Pluto is not that cat. Meow! Oh, now, you see, you've hurt his feelings. Oh, for crying out now, loud. tell him you're sorry. Phil wants to apologize, Pluto... Tell him you forgive him. Go. Once again, I was staring into Pluto's eyes. And into that boiling maelstrom of colors, all I could see now was brown. And it was the brown of the cement in the basement. And on this brown cement was a sharp and pointed mason's trowel. And suddenly, the trowel was in my hand. My way. Oh, no. He's driving me crazy. I have to kill him. Yeah. Phil, what's wrong? You're trembling. It, it's, it's nothing. It can't be nothing. I'm going out. Again? Where? For a walk. Where do you always go on these walks? Nowhere. I just walk. Now stop nagging. you, Gwen. Good old Gwen. Comfy as a pair of old shoes. Ready as a candlestick. Reliable, dependable. There when you need me. Well, it's true. Well, congratulate me. I'm getting married. What? Married? Why? Why? Has it occurred to you I might want a life of my own? Bruce asked me to marry him. Oh, Bruce. He may not be much, but he's all mine. And at least he asked me. Gwen, Gwen, listen, in just a couple of years, I, I'll really be rich. And I hope you'll be very happy. I'll make it up to you. As they say in the movies, I guess this is goodbye. But, Gwen, if I can't see you... No, Philip. All or nothing. That's what I want. And to be fair, it's what Sylvia wants. Choose between us. Who gets all and who gets nothing. Mm. Maybe I would miss Gwen. But not for long. Gwen comes back. She always comes back. My problem... Sylvia. Oh, I have to calm down. Keep your temper. Concentrate on loving Sylvia. Loving Sylvia. Phil. Yes, dear. Pluto and I have a question to ask you. Oh, what is it? Who is Gwen? What did you say? I think you heard me. He heard me, didn't he, Pluto? Meow. Who is Gwen? Well, Gwen is a girl I used to know. When did you last see her? Now, look, what is I'd this? like an answer. Sylvia. Who told you about Gwen? Who do you think? Pluto. What does Pluto know? Everything. 
You're in love with her, aren't you? No. Don't lie to me. I am telling you the truth. You can lie to me, but you can't lie to Pluto. Yeah! Sylvia! Sylvia, now listen to me. I am telling you the truth. I love you. Oh, tell that to Pluto. I dare you to tell that to Pluto. Pluto! Pluto, that mangy cat. Hey, where are you going? Home. You're home now. No, I'm going home to my father. I never want to see you again. That damn cat, I'll kill him. No, no, no. Please, don't. Run, Pluto. Run. Oh, that, that stupid cat. Look, he ran down to the basement, Sylvia. He can't get away now. I've got you cornered, you stupid cat. Dodge him. Pluto, dodge him. You can't get away. You won't get away. Phil, you're mad. Put down that towel. Stand still. Stand still, you stupid beast. You've got nowhere to go. Here. Here, Pluto. Here. Come to me. Come, come. I'll protect you. Sylvia, let go of that cat. You give me Pluto. No. I won't have any peace. I won't have any sanity until I kill him. No, Phil, no. Let go of him. No. scared of. Uh, you know, she has all kinds of, well, weird ideas, and, well, what with that cat? Who knows? Maybe she just wandered off. Well, we'll find her. You have to be brave, son. Oh. Oh, I just couldn't get along without her. Dad. My only worry was the will, but I was still in it, so that worry was unnecessary. And actually, I was in it bigger and better than before. <laughs> you know, maybe I should have killed her sooner. Yes? Mr. Sterling? Uh, I'm Mr. Sterling. We're police officers. Oh? May we come in? Uh, I'm Lieutenant Haley. Sergeant Miller? Yes, Detective you know. Krauss. Well, oh, well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Your wife has been reported missing. Yes, that's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Oh, well, my father-in-law and I wrote out a deposition. He's Frank J. Fenris, a very influential man. So I've heard. Your wife disappeared last Tuesday night. Oh, yes. Mr. and Mrs. Conway, your next-door neighbors, report they heard sounds of arguing. Did they? Mrs. Conway characterized it as a fight. Uh, well, Mrs. Conway is a fool. But did you have a fight with your wife? Certainly. <laughs> uh, don't you ever fight with your wife, Lieutenant? Do you have any idea where your wife might be now? Lieutenant, do you suspect me of doing away with Sylvia? No, sir. Well, I don't like the tone of your voice. And I don't like the look on your face either. I'm sorry. Yeah, just that cynical, know-it-all cop look. 
Yes. You figure that I killed her. Mr. Sterling, I'm sorry if we seem to irritate you, but our job requires that we ask questions. <laughs> so what did I do, Lieutenant? Kill her and uh, hide her body? Nobody said that, sir. Then why are you here? To search the house. Now, I know my rights. For that, you need a warrant. We have a warrant. Oh. Well, go ahead, Jim. Otto, look around. Well, Lieutenant, any corpses in the closets? Will you show us to the basement? Uh, the basement? Yes. You have one? Well, of course we do. Uh, just follow me. I'm sorry we put you to so much trouble. Something the matter, Mr. Sterling? Mr. Sterling. Huh? No, I'm... I, I'm all right. I, I... Are you ill? You look so pale. Uh, I know this must be a difficult time for you, Mr. Sterling. Yeah, yes, it, it, it is. I, uh, well, I... we're through here. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I'm just... I'm just fine. Well... Goodbye, sir. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. You know, it's funny. I hear a cat. He must be right in this room. But I don't see him. A, a cat? A cat? W w what cat? You mean, you don't hear that cat? Why, he's... He's... He's behind that wall. He has to be behind that wall. Pluto. Oh, no. It, it can't be Pluto. He's dead. He's dead. Otto, Jim, get some tools. We're going to break down that wall. He's dead. I killed him. Why isn't he dead? The answer is simple, and it's also the moral of our story, which is, a man is ill-advised to fool with a cat. Why? Because a man only has one life, while a cat has nine. And at this point in time, Philip Frederick Sterling has no lives at all, while Pluto still has eight. I'll be back shortly. doing on this show is bringing back some of the best of the good old days. And a good old expression used to be the cat's meow. Mom and Dad use it all the time, even though they didn't exactly know what it meant. Well, after this tale, we know. Our cast included Norman Rose, Marion Seldes, Robert Dryden, Joe DeSantis, and Evie Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Three times on different expeditions we have excavated with no success. This time we have managed to isolate the Mastaba itself. In spite of every kind of miserable luck. Cave-ins, men injured, crews deserting... But at last, within the next few days, I'm convinced the entrance will be found. Oh, how exciting, how wonderful for you. And Hasiba, I hope she isn't a disappointment. Was she really so beautiful, do you think? Incredibly. Her face shamed the shining sun and the day was lit up by the light of her countenance. You know, you sound as though you'd actually seen her. I have. You have? Oh, yes, yes, my dear. For every description fits you. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant 
Dreams? <laughs> 